Hey everybody! In this video, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go through some strategies for uh, solving problems uh, involving Atwood machines. And an Atwood machine is really just a system of masses connected by pulleys, um, and you can connect them in all kinds of different ways. They can be just hanging straight from the pulley. One of the masses can be on a table. You could have uh, you can have a pulley attached to, or a mass attached on one end, and another pulley with two masses attached on the other end. There are all kinds of different ways. And really, we're just going to solve these using our same old, same old strategies of using Newton's second law uh, and free body diagrams. However, since there are two different objects, or possibly three different objects, we need to, uh, we're going to need two free body diagrams, or possibly more, and we're going to have to solve a system of equations. I'm going to show you two strategies um, for solving Atwood machines. And the first is going to be the traditional strategy, uh, which is just solve a system of equations using Newton's second law. The second strategy, I think, is a little bit easier. And that's, uh, that's what we get if we treat uh, the Atwood machine, if we treat the masses like a single object. Then we only have to solve one equation. But let's start with the traditional strategy. And here's our example. A 55 kilogram mass and a 20 kilogram mass hang from either end of a string wrapped around a frictionless pulley. Find the acceleration of the masses. The mass of the string is negligible. Now uh, we have two masses, which I'm going to label big M and little m. Big M is going to be the large mass, 55 kilograms. Little m is going to be the small mass, 20 kilograms. And uh, what's important about this problem is that our string has a constant length. So whenever one of our masses moves down, the other mass is going to move up by the same amount. The length of the string is constant, which means the velocity of mass 1 is always going to be the same as the velocity of mass 2, which means the acceleration of mass 1 is going to be the same as the acceleration of mass 2. So that's actually going to be one of our equations, but uh, I'm going to ask a hold that thought for a second um, because we're going to do something interesting with our coordinate system here. Usually we choose uh, one direction to be positive and one direction to be negative, and that's the direction of the acceleration. But here we have two objects accelerating in different directions. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to set each object's coordinate system to be different. Since big M is the larger mass, uh, big M is going to be accelerating down. So for big M, we're going to be choosing down to be positive. Little m is smaller, so it's going to accelerate up. And for little m, we're going to choose up to be positive. And that way, we can just say that the acceleration of big M, acceleration of big M is equal to the acceleration of little m, uh, sine and all. That's actually going to be one of our equations, so I'll label it 1 here. Uh, well, next up, we're just going to set up our free body diagrams for each of these objects. Um, first, I'll do big M. Let's do it down here. This is for big M. Oops, big M. Gravity pulls down. Has a magnitude of big M G, which uh, if we calculate that magnitude, it ends up being 539 newtons. 539 newtons. And the only other force acting on big M is going to be an upward tension force, which I'm going to call capital T. Now, we don't know what the tension force is, but we do know it's going to be less probably than, well, it's going to be less than big MG because our pulley is going to accelerate down. So we're going to do another free body diagram for little m going to be for little m. Our downward force is going to be little mg, which if we calculate that, 20 times 9.8 gives us 196 newtons down. And then our tension force is up. Uh, and tension is going to be larger than mg. So, uh, so yeah, tension is larger than mg because little m is going to accelerate in the positive direction. So now we can set up Newton's second law for both of these objects. And remember, for big M, down is positive. For little m, up is positive. So let's set up Newton's second law for big M. 
sigma f equals mass, that would be big mass, times acceleration. And our downward force is going to be big mg. Our upward force is capital T tension equals ma. Over here we have sigma f equals little ma. And our, uh, our upward force is T. Our downward force is little mg is equal to little ma. Now we have two equations. And we have, well, we have two unknowns. Uh, our unknowns are going to be tension. And our other unknown is going to be the acceleration, which is what we're trying to solve for. Because they're attached by a string, the accelerations for both masses are going to be equal. So those are the same variable. And because it's the same string that's attached to both masses, the tensions are equal. Tension is always going to be equal at either end of a string. So we just need to, uh, base, well, we can either substitute or we can eliminate t uh, in order to solve this for a. Um, since, I, since I'm solving for a, we can eliminate t by just adding these two equations together. This is equation 1. This is equation 2. Equations 1 plus 2 will give us, on the left side we have big mg minus t plus t minus m, little mg is equal to big ma plus little ma. Our t's are going to cancel. Tension cancels out there. We end up with big mg minus little mg is equal to ma plus, well big ma plus little ma. If we factor out an acceleration there, we can write that as acceleration times big M plus little m. And we can just divide both sides by big M plus little m, divided by big M plus little m. Big M plus little m cancels. And we have solved then for our acceleration. A is equal to big Mg minus little mg divided by big M plus little m. We've already solved for big Mg and little mg. So when we plug in our numbers, big Mg is 539 newtons. Little Mg is 196 newtons. Divided by our total mass is going to be uh, 55 plus 20, or 75 kilograms. That gives us... That gives us 4. 57 meters per second squared for our acceleration. And really to two sig figs, we would do A is equal to 4.6 meters per second squared. So that's it. Set up a system of equations. Because our accelerations and tensions are equal, we can, uh, we can solve that system pretty easily. Uh, next I'm going to show you uh, another strategy, which I think is a little bit easier. Um, it's pretty similar, but uh, well, I'm going to do it off to the right here. Uh, again, we're going to start with two free body diagrams, and uh, actually, since since we already have the free body diagrams, let's just let's just use those free body diagrams over here. I'm going to box them off in green. So I'm going to just copy this free body diagram over to the other side. Let's get it copied. And paste it. OK, so we have now uh, free body diagrams for both of our objects. Now, now for this method, we're, uh, because both of our masses are attached by a string, they move as one. Uh, any motion that big M experiences, little m experiences as well, that's true for velocity, acceleration, and changes in position. So because they move as one, we can treat them as a single object that's going in one direction. And we have kind of a warped coordinate system where our positive direction kind of loops around 
uh, that, that pulley, but we can still treat them as one object. Then we can set up Newton's second law for our single object, sigma f is equal to ma, uh, and we have to add up the, the total forces for this combined object. Uh, now on big M, we have, we have big M g in the positive direction, and we have t in the negative direction. For little m, we have t in the positive direction, and we have little mg in the, ne in the negative direction. And actually, the mass of our object is going to be the total mass uh, of our two individual weights, because this is the thing that's moving. So when we look at the ma side, we do m, big M plus little m, times our acceleration. Now, on the left side, we have t minus t. That cancels. And we can divide both sides by big M plus little m big M plus little m. And we end up with acceleration is equal to big Mg minus little mg over big M plus little m. And that's exactly the same expression that we got over here, uh, which means we're going to get the same exact result as before. It's going to be 4.6 meters per second squared. So there's an example of an Atwood machine. For any Atwood machine, we can use uh, this strategy. Uh, either we set up a system of equations based on our two free body diagrams and solve that system of equations. Or if our objects move together, we can treat them as one object with a mass that's equal to the combined mass of our two weights, and that will get us to the same answer. Hope that's helpful. Bye.